Hello world and welcome back to the channel. Today we've got another G1000 video and we're going to be going over alternate approaches. So what is an alternate approach? How to input that into the G1000 and more importantly, how to execute that while in flight. All coming up on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. Welcome back to Microsoft Flight Sim, everyone. And today we're gonna to be talking about alternate approaches. So what is an alternate approach? Well, an alternate approach is basically a safety procedure that we're gonna allow the G1000 to help us out with. All right, Evan, flat, flat, speed brakes, speed brakes. So let me explain a little bit further. But if you like the content today, be sure to hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And while you're down there, smash on that thumbs up button. Okay, so let's take a look at the flight plan that we have for us for today. Now keep in mind that we are not gonna be flying this entire flight plan and we are only using it for demonstration purposes for the alternate approach. So we're gonna be departing St. Elmo down here at 2 Romeo 5. We're gonna make our way over here to the FITAV waypoint and then all the way up here to the MVC VOR, and then our RNAV approach inbound to Jackson Municipal for Romeo 3. So as I explained earlier, our alternate approach is an emergency procedure that we use during our takeoff and climb. As we are departing St. Elmo's down here, on our climb to cruise over here at the FITAV, if there was an emergency that were to occur, that we would have an electrical failure, a mechanical failure, or just a straight engine failure, then we need to have a emergency plan that we can execute so that we can safely make it back to the ground. So that is what we're gonna do today and show you how to use that alternate approach, allowing the GPS to take some of that load off of our mind. So the alternate approach that we're gonna use for today is right over here and that is the KBFM airport. Now I see that they have a beautiful ILS right here. So we're gonna use that as our alternate approach. All right, so let's go back to the cockpit and show you how we're gonna input this in the G1000. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get some power. Now keep in mind that we're not going over any procedures for the aircraft. This is strictly on the G1000. And if you have any questions throughout the video, please post those down below in the comments section and I will get right back to you as soon as I can. All right, so now that we're running, I know the battery won't die on us. Let's hop over here to the MFD and enter this in our flight plan. Now I'm gonna go through this kind of quick because we did go over how to enter a flight plan into the G1000 already. And if you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link up here in the corner for that. So first we need to hit the flight plan menu and then get our selection cursor to pop up. To do that, we're just gonna hit in on the outer, no, we're gonna hit in on the inner knob and then we can use our scroll knob here to scroll to where we want. Now remember we have one waypoint in between, so we're just gonna highlight the in route and then we are gonna roll the inner knob so that we can start to enter that new waypoint. Now we're, we're gonna use the keyboard here, so we just hit this little keyboard icon, and then we're gonna type in the FITAV waypoint. Perfect, there it is. All we need to do now is hit the enter button, and it has populated that for us. All right, so now that we have the FITAV waypoint in, we're gonna add that MVC VOR. So we're just gonna scroll down to the next line and then roll on that inner knob. And now we can again hit the keyboard button at the top and type in MVC. And that's gonna be for that VOR. We're gonna smash on the enter button and we just need to pick the correct VOR. We're in the USA today. So we're just gonna highlight that, hit the enter and there we go. All right, so now that we've got those two waypoints in our flight plan, we can now go ahead and proceed with entering our alternate approach. Now normally you would head over here to the procedure button, go up here and select approach, and you're gonna pick your approach for your destination airport. Well, that's where today's lesson comes into play because we're not gonna enter 
an approach for our destination airport, we're gonna enter that alternate approach for our emergency procedure if something were to happen during takeoff and climb. So let's show you how we're gonna do that. Now there are other ways to do that down here at the bottom in the G1000, but unfortunately we don't have those available to us just yet. So we're gonna go over only one way that we can enter an alternate approach. You wanna come over here and hit the procedure button and we're gonna go ahead and select the approach. Once you highlight the approach, we're gonna hit the enter button and here's where we're gonna take a little different approach to entering this information. So we need to hit the clear button and use the outer knob to scroll all the way up to our four Romeo three airport. Here's where we're gonna do a little bit of change. We just need to delete that real quick and remember the name of our emergency airport that we're gonna use for our alternate approach is KBFM. So that's what we wanna enter up here. So now that we've got that selected, you just wanna make sure that you come over here and deselect the keyboard button before you go any further. Then you wanna just pop on down here and smash on that enter button. Now when you do, it will take us down to the approaches and remember, we're gonna pick that ILS 32 approach. So we've already got that highlighted. We're gonna hit on the enter button. Now we've gone over this in a previous video as well. We are not gonna use the vectors transition. If you guys haven't seen the vectors video, I'll post the link up here at the top for that as well, or down in the description. Make sure to check that out if you're unsure whether to use vectors or not. So we're just gonna scroll down and highlight the initial approach fix and then hit on the enter button. Take note of the frequency for the ILS, which is 108.5, and we're just gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom and hit the load on this. We don't wanna activate this approach because we're not sure if we're gonna need it or not. So all we need to do is highlight the load, go over here and smash on the enter button, yes to the lawyer language, and we have now loaded an alternate approach for us. Now let's take a look at this map real quick because some people may be getting a little confused. As you can see, we have all of our original flight plan from 2 Romeo 5 up over to FITAV, and then all the way up to the MVC VOR, but we don't have the destination airport in there anymore. That's because we changed when we entered an alternate approach, but that's okay because we can always change that back once we get up in flight. Now let's zoom in and take a look at that alternate approach. Let's open up the flight plan here, make it a little bit easier. If we scroll down to the final approach fix, depending on where we have a failure in flight, that's gonna depend on how we're gonna execute the alternate approach. So now that we've gone over what an alternate approach is, how to enter it in the G1000. Now we're gonna show you how to execute that while we're in flight. So I'm just gonna set up the PFD real quick and then we're gonna taxi over to the runway and then I'll bring you guys back. All right, so we are over here. We've taxied over here to runway 24 and we're getting ready to uh, take off. So let's just show you what we've got everything set for over here on the PFD. We've got our altitude set at 1700 feet we have our flight level change set at 110 knots, and we wanna make sure that we have the navigation turned on as well. Over here on our MFD, you can see our flight plan that we have already set up in the GPS as well as our alternate approach. All right, so let's hit this bird off the ground and show you how we are going to execute the alternate approach. What a gorgeous day in Microsoft Flight Simulator. All right, so let's turn us around and get lined up with our GPS course here. As you can see, we are now already at our 1700 feet and we are now approaching our GPS course 
and there you go so gps is now lit up in green we are now under the guidance of the gps for our autopilot now while that's going on we're gonna head over here to the mfd and talk about some different scenarios now remember as i stated before that depending on where we are going to have our malfunction is going to depend on how we are going to execute this approach. Now we've already talked about using the vectors to final approach and that is one of the ways that we're going to execute this for today. Now if we are going to be coming in close to the area of our final approach fix which is right over here at the LURDE how we would want to execute the alternate approach is to head right over here to the procedure button and go up and activate vectors to final now remember when we activate vectors to final all the other waypoints along our final route will be deleted and only our final approach fix is going to be highlighted now that's going to be okay for our situation because we're going to be so close to the final approach fix and we're already at the altitude that we need to be we can use that procedure for this type of scenario now if we just so happen to be somewhere up in this vicinity when we have our failure and we want to still use this airport as our alternate approach then we would execute our alternate approach just a little bit differently. So we would go over here to the procedure button and instead of activating vectors to final, we're just gonna activate the approach. Now the reason why we're gonna activate the approach is because we're gonna be closer to the initial approach fix and we don't wanna lose any of our waypoints or flight restrictions along the way. But to be perfectly honest with you, once we cross this body of water, this airport is probably not going to be the best decision for an alternate takeoff. So in today's scenario, we're going to be using the procedure activate vectors to final. All right, so let's show you how that's going to work. So we know the airport for our alternate approach is going to be somewhere. There it is right there. Perfect. So now we have our electrical failure, mechanical failure. We need to get this thing down on the ground. So what do we do? All we need to do is come right down, hit the procedure button, go to activate vectors to final. We can hit enter on that. Now when we activate that vectors to final, there's a couple things that are gonna happen really quick. The first thing that you're gonna notice is that it's going to automatically switch us into localizer one and it's automatically going to put the localizer frequency up in our nav one frequency the next thing that you're going to notice is that the gps is automatically going to switch over into roll and pitch mode so it's not going to be following any particular course now when this happens, you have to make sure you got to go over and hit the nav button on the MFD side. When you hit that nav button, then you will see the localizer is activated, but it is not yet locked on to that localizer frequency. Also, as you can see, our glide slope has populated over here on the right next to the altitude ticker. Let's hop over here to the MFD and we can see what's going on right here. So as you can see, once we activate vectors to final, a couple things happened for us over here. Now, if we head over here to the flight plan menu, like I told you, all the different waypoints that are gonna be prior to our final approach fix are gonna be erased. So keep that in mind that if you're gonna be farther away from that final approach fix, you definitely don't wanna use activate vectors to final. Now, one of the other things that you really wanna make sure that you do for the GPS to lock on to the localizer frequency, you have to be pretty close to that frequency. So we're just gonna switch us into heading mode and get us close to that ILS approach course. Now you really wanna get a localizer hold before you activate your approach. And as you can see over here on the map, we're getting pretty close. So we're gonna bring us out. And as you can see here, the localizer is highlighted we're gonna highlight and hit on the approach button. And now the plane should be following the ILS all the way in to the runway for our emergency landing. 
we have now killed the engine off and hopefully we are going to make it down onto the runway. Now as you can see this particular use of the GPS can really take a lot of weight off of you as a pilot so you don't have to manage all of this stuff. All right, so that was our emergency landed. Landed. <laughs> All right, if anybody has any questions, please post those down below in the comments section, and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I hope everybody got a lot of information out of this episode today, and I want to thank everybody for joining us here today on the channel. If you haven't done so already, make sure you go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And to all of my flight simmers out there around the world, keep the blue side up, and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, everybody, for watching.